I was in a job I absolutely detested uh, in Bathgate, weirdly enough, and I was on night shift. I would do anything to avoid you know, the job that was when I was on the tools. And I was given the book, I think, by someone to read, and I read it in three nights on the night shift, just ignoring everyone else. But once you start, and it was Bill like Simon, started reading it, I know it's a cliche, but you know that thing of, couldn't, couldn't put it down, and I just absolutely romped it, and that was unlike me. I, I liked reading, but I would take up my time with it, but I literally just kept, what's next, what's next? What I just, I absolutely got into it, and you're absolutely right, um, in terms of the vernacular and, and stuff like that, it just makes it, it makes it so much more real, you know? And I think even, even although I'm from the West Coast, I think it was just great to see uh, a variety of Scots or whatever being so popular, you know? But yeah, it was it had a massive impact, and then, I'm not ashamed to say I'm a massive urban fanboy. I love the film Train Spot and um, read all the books, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, I, it's probably the first. I mean, when I was a kid, I read all the usual, the same as everybody else. A lot of kids did the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, all that sort of stuff when I was 12 and 13. But I would say probably that was the first book I read and I thought, oh, this, this is for me. That, this is, you know, this is, you know, I love 1984 and all that sort of stuff, but it, it, this is writing for us. You know, this is writing for guys like, as I say, as we try and do with the plays, uh, writing that you would recommend to your pals. I mean, you, this is the sort of thing you would, you know, you would you'd talk about in the pub. That's probably the best way to say I mean, You would talk about this in the pub and how much you loved it, you know? So, yeah, it had a, a massive influence on me. First time I came in, uh, in contact with uh, Arvin Welsh was watching Trainspot in the movie. So, again, just similar to the guys where you're watching it and you're seeing Scottish people on screen. Um, it's sometimes not the most flattering picture, but it was it was a world that you kind of could understand and kind of had grew up in the, the city of Glasgow, obviously it's in Edinburgh, but, uh, but yeah, just watching it, it was nice to see people on screen that you'd kind of seen in your world rather than just movie stars, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it was. Every scene was like an MTV music video at the time, but visceral and really dirty and alive, but also cool. And that was part of the that was part of the thing at the time. It was coming along with the music and, and the soundtrack that went to it as well. Everyone was punctuated with that. And the first time you see them robbing at John Menzies and running down Princess Street, you're in, you're in it. So there wasn't any. There's not a spare scene in it. Even the extra scenes that you see on the DVD extras and things are brilliant. You know, uh, the Swannies there with his leg cut off. Ta da! Brilliant scenes that didn't make the, the final film. I mean, that didn't make the final cut. You've also got Renton's job interview after Spud's job interview. Renton does it as well. So the, every single scene was like, as I said, that sort of MTV music video, but dirty, dirty video. I, I think that Spud's job interview yeah. is my favourite scene from any movie ever. That's superb, uh, isn't it? I, 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 can, I can watch that now and still, you know what's coming, and I'll, the tears are still running down yeah, my face. Yeah, it's, it's probably the best piece of comedy acting I've ever seen in my life. I, I, I still, yeah. to this day, it's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And I think it's also the poster and things as well. Everyone had that. It's one of those things, it's like a first album that everyone's got, you know, it was like Oasis first came out, it's that. Everyone's talking about it. You said everyone's talking about it in the pub. When was the last time my book was talked about and passed around in pubs? It was Trainspot. The film came out and it was equally as good, very different, but equally as good as the book. And then you've got these iconic characters that everybody knows. And the poster just punctuated that as well. And the attitude in the poster was great as well. I, know I, think, that, I, I think as well, it, what I would say as well is that obviously there's a massive focus on Trainspot, and, and rightly so. However, I remember a friend inviting me along to the Acid House. Uh, to the cinema, I had no idea what I was going to see. No idea what I was going to see. Of course, here comes Tambo, you know, from the from the from the Grand Star Pods. And I left the cinema, and I didn't know whether to laugh or cry, mm. you know, because it, every it was three pieces of what were stunning pieces of theatre, and and I think I'm so glad I didn't know what I was going to see. Uh, and I and I laughed, you know, you know the the soft touch that really affected me. I, I was like, oh, I, I this is. You know I mean, and the thing is, and this is what I love about it, you know it's not real, right? But you're sitting there going, oh, Jesus Christ, no, no come on, give the guy a break. I mean, and then yeah, yeah. there's so much humour, and it's just, and, and I remember leaving that, so yes, well, we, like I say, train spotting gets a lot of praise, really. So look at the, 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 the catalogue, the work, you know, yeah, absolutely. House, films, you know, this is a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal back catalogue of work, you know. Absolutely. So for us for us to now add to that, the porno, um, um, it's, you can tell, I mean, you can tell, but as a massive fanboy, it's, it's, it's a, we take the responsibility on our shoulders and, and I look forward to it, you know, I mean, of trying to bring this now to the, to the stage, you know. It was great, it was great to do, because we were the boys, you know, we were all going to cast, cast together, we were taken through to Muir House and built in all these places and shown the places we'd be in. We lived in the world of it, they encouraged us to go begging together. I got barred from three of my favourite bars <laughs> in Glasgow, I remember Nico, throwing it in Nico's with them as well, all fighting, we went to a pool hall, we had a big fight, it's great. 
So by the time we started filming, that was the first day we met Irvin as well. And I've got a nude scene cut as well. I was, it was out overshadowing everyone. Um, so I had a nude scene as we were working out the showers, and the story in the book is that Irvin is playing the parkie, which he was. He was a parkie for a while when he was first taking heroin and things and just kind of hanging about and dossing about. But this was one of his jobs. And it was great because they would put the showers off. So my thing was, they're the effing showers, are they working? And I'm stuck all naked. But Irvin, as the parkie, is in his wee office. Is he masturbating? <laughs> with, with exercising with a, a, an adult magazine, let us see. I'm not used to editing myself like this. This is, this is coming. This is, I'm coming from the porn though, a rehearsal room, and it's very, very difficult to, to, to adjust. Even just purely down to costs, you can't afford to have 20 actors, right? So if you take it down to about six, I decided to focus on the four main guys and say, right, where are they now? 15 years later, where are they now? It's a, a brilliant cast. You know, live theatre, you, you touched on the pandemic, David, coming back to the Edinburgh Festival, I, I've been, been fortunate enough to perform at the Edinburgh Festival, produced a couple of shows as well. To be going back to live theatre and live audiences is just, it's, it's a, an absolute blessing. And, and hats off to people at Davey who are producing in, in the current times, because it's, it's uh, you know, with, with Covid and everybody, everything we've got going on, it it's, it's, it's takes... Uh, Big balls Big to do balls. what you're doing, buddy, so, so we, we, we're very grateful. Our industry shut down, and as a part of sitting there going, will I ever get to go on the studio? Not knowing anything about this mysterious virus that turned up, we go, will I get a chance to do that? Is that? Am I having to look at a new career? How do I want to spend my time? How do I want to spend my days? And when, when offers like this come through, you're going, yeah, you're damn right, I want to continue doing this career and want to, want to be part of it, so, so yeah. But uh, hopefully, you know, if, if you and McGregor and want to come and see it, I'm sure they'll, uh, they'll be impressed and they'll, they'll like uh, some of the wee tips of the heart that we've, we've put in it um, from the films. Just there was this random tweet that he put out just saying finally got around to reading the script and he was mightily impressed and he was really looking forward to it and he liked how it basically did its own thing as well. You know, it was different to the slightly different to the book, slightly different to the film and, and he was really looking forward to seeing it and again just going back to earlier on as a fanboy, geez old, do you know what I mean? Like it was because it was unexpected, it was you know there was no pre planning on it and so it was fantastic. So yeah, if if he thinks it's good then that's that's good enough for me, quite frankly, yeah. I know. So, um, yeah, like, like I say, he's, he's coming to see the show, which would be amazing. I mean, there's so, I mean, he has got so much going on. I think he's got the musical, he's got documentaries getting made about him. There's so much going on. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him come along and seeing the show. In general, I'm looking forward to getting his feedback on it as well, you know.